Hi everybody. Uh, I've made some videos before about how to graph using Excel for your, your science classes, but today I'm going to show you how to graph using Logger Pro. Uh, for those of you in physics, this is going to be really important. Uh, DP Physics, they really love the, they really seem to love the tools that are involved uh, or, or uh, possible with uh, Logger Pro. Um, for chemistry, not as essential, but you're probably going to end up using it with your um, with your uh, data logging uh, devices. So it's a good idea to know how to enter data into this so that you can work with it. And even if you're getting data directly from a data logger, uh, you're going to need to know how you can do certain things with this, like finding the best fit, putting in uncertainty, uh, setting up the columns so that they actually have the names you want, things like that. Uh, to start, we're going to start by entering some data. Now I've got some data up here in this um, uh, in this little table right here. So I'm going to enter it. Now when you start with Logger Pro, you get two columns of data just called X and Y. All right, so I'm going to start entering that. And I'll show you a little trick. I notice I've got 1 to 10 here. So I'm actually going to go into the column options. And I can generate values from 1 to 10 an increment of 1. So I can generate values here, numeric values from 1 to 10, increment 1, number of cells 10, and hit done. And it's going to ask me if I want to continue anyway. And there we go. I just entered all the data. And now I'm going to enter the data from the rest. And this is just a simple matter of typing it in. Um, one thing it likes, seems to like to do is always go to the next thing, the, the next um, it runs through the cells like this, in rows, then to the next col or across the columns in one row, then to the next row, then to the next row. It doesn't, if you hit enter, it doesn't automatically just go straight down. So you're best off, rather than trying to hit enter like you might think, hit, just hit the down key. So, um, this part's gonna, probably going to be a bit boring, so I'm going to pause this and come back when I've got all the data put in. All right, and I'm back. So there's, all the data has now been uh, put into my uh, into these columns, but I want to set up the columns. What I do here, if I want to set up my columns and give them nice labels, is I need to go to the column options. And if you mouse over this, it says double click for column options. So that's what I'm going to do. Double clicked. I'm going to enter time as my x value. The short value will short name will be t, and the units will be seconds. And this Entering these units properly is important because that, uh, when you start doing best fit, that tells the program what the units for the best fit should be, which can often help you figure out what best fit actually is. Uh, I'm going to go to the next one now. So that's set up. This is displacement. So I've got a time displacement graph. That's going to be S for displacement, which will be in meters, of course. And we hit done. Now, for some reason, this is showing the displacement as S when the name over here is time. It might be because displacement's too long. So, now nah, we'll leave it as it is. Okay, so we've got displacement and time here in the graph. And I'll show you a little trick. If you click this, you can choose what goes in. If you click the, the axis label, you can choose what goes in each of these um, each of these axes. So if you want it to be a... Now if we had, say, speed in data as well, I could select it here. I could even do time versus time, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Or I want to do displacement versus time, so I'm fine there. All right, next thing I want to do is start adding some error bars to add the uncertainty. Now, when I'm adding error bars, there are two ways I can do it. One is when the error is the same across the entire column. So if all of the displacement data have the same uncertainty, then I can enter that, um, I can enter that in one way. The other way is when each of your values has a different uncertainty. The uncertainty is actually rising as you go from low numbers to high numbers. So I'm going to show you the first way. What I've got here, all these distance measurements, they all have an uncertainty of 0.01 meters. All right? Now, 
the way I can enter that is to go into my column options, which I just did there. Double clicked on the column, the top of the column, and then I'm going to go into options. Now, if there's some options in here, I can choose how to display the points, I can choose their colors, their displayed precision, uh, which might be important later. Um, but what I can most importantly do is add the error bars. So I'm going to click this little check mark here to add error bars. And I've got some options. I have percent and fixed value. So we know these as percent uncertainty and absolute uncertainty. If I want to enter the error, the constant error, just type it in here, click OK. And now you can't really see, but each of these has a very small error bar. I'm going to go back and make those error bars a little bigger. Let's say it's down to 0.1. I'm going to change this displayed precision. Oh, one decimal place. Uh, to match that, I'll click OK. And now you can see they have a much larger error bar. Just put my mouse pointer by there. Yeah, so you can actually see the error bars there. All right, now, that's fine if they have all the same uncertainty, but what if they have larger uncertainties as you go along? Well, to do this, you need to add a new column. So I'm going to insert the table, oh, sorry, into the table. With my data sets, I'm going to, ins I'm going to go to Data Menu and New Manual Column. And here it wants to know what is my, uh, the name of this column. I'm going to call this un, uh, Displacement Uncertainty. And for this, I'm going to call this, I'm going to use the Greek letter delta and then S for Displacement Uncertainty. We often use delta S to represent that. I'm going to go to the options. I don't want to have an error bar on that. Um, the display precision, well, we'll make it automatic. The rest of this I think will be fine. And data sets, I just want to check and make sure it's going into the same data set as time and displacement. And it is. So now I can enter that. Oh, forgot one thing. That is in meters as well. So now I can enter my uncertainties. So this is going to be 0 0.1. Oops. Uh, 0 0.1. 0 0.1. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, whoops, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, now let's make this 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Okay, that's all done. So now each of them has gotten their own uncertainty. What I want to do now is go back to the error bars, double click here. Or, sorry, go back to the displacement column, S column, and where it says error bar calculations, I now, instead of using just the constant, I want it to use the column displacement uncertainty. Click done, and you can see how the later ones have much bigger error bars. So we can, we want to do a few little things to uh, clean up our graph a little bit. One of the things I'd like to do is add more grid lines. I think it helps if you make sure that your, um, your readers can find, uh, can really read your graph properly. So what I'm going to do, double click here, that's going to bring up the graph options. So I just double clicked on the back. I want to go to the graph options tab and they have stuff for grid. Now right now, the major ticks, that's the ones above the numbers, are the ones that are actually uh, shown. But the minor ticks, I want those to be there as well. And I can have some options. I can make them solid. Um, I'm going to make them dash just to show that they're a little bit different. And there we go. There are those grid lines. Nicely set. Uh, I believe I can make... Can I make more grid lines? Or ticks? Yeah, it looks like probably not. Uh, all right, so we've got the major, the minor grid lines. Uh, one thing I might want to do here is uh, I've got all of my data points, but this last one isn't showing up very well. So I want to adjust the scale. Now in Logger Pro, there's a couple ways you can adjust the scale. You might want to shift the entire graph up or down. You might want to, and you might want to make the scale bigger or smaller. There. Are there, 
if you mo move your mouse pointer over the axes, in the middle it lets you scroll the entire graph up or down. In the top it lets you um, stretch the axis, but the minimum value is going to stay the same. Down here it lets you stretch the axis, the maximum value is going to stay the same. What I want to do is actually, I want this left side to still be where it is. I want to take this, all these points, and shrink them in towards the left. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to hold it over here. Click and drag that back a little bit just so you can see it. And I think I might make this one a little bigger. There we go. Still want, I still want to see the error bars, so that'll be all right. Okay, there is a nice graph done. So you can make a picture of this and bring it into your lab report. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any good way to make a title on this, so you'd need to write in a title separately. Uh, but there you go. That's your Logger Pro graph. Now in the next video, I'm going to talk about how to make best fit lines. That's going to be important for everybody. Uh, but for physics, I'm going to also talk about linearizing and finding the minimum and maximum fit lines. So stay tuned for that. Uh, thanks for watching.